Is your Toro Super Recycler lawnmower not backing up? Let's figure this one out. Hey guys and gals, welcome to Garage Gear. I'm JB, giving you the best tips and tricks to survive life in and out of the garage. So every once in a while, I notice that this Toro Super Recycler is difficult to back up. And some subscribers here on the channel have said the same thing, claiming that they took the mower back to the dealer several times, only to have the problem persist. After my many, many uses and some careful observations, I had to get a little personal with the personal pace, you know? I noticed that there are a couple of situations that we create that cause this mower to get into a funk. But before we get into all those different scenarios, allow me to set the stage and explain how the personal pace system is actually working with the transmission. Now to get a better view of the transmission, you're gonna simply look behind the engine and you'll see this cover and there's a bolt that's right here. I took that out already and what we're gonna do is just simply slide this up and out of the way. So underneath this cover is the transmission. Here it is and right now it's in a neutral position. You can see that we have slack on the belt so it's not tight and when I grab onto the personal pace and bring it down as if I were driving forward, you will see that the belt tightens up and engages the transmission. It also takes that transmission and brings it up a little bit. The belt is now engaged with the drive shaft and it's gonna spin the transmission and therefore spin the wheels. Now to get the transmission to let go, we're gonna simply let go of the personal pace and this would be as if we're bringing it back to ourselves. And you can see when we do that, the belt loosens up. Simply put, the transmission disengages and it drops back down then. Along with that, let's have a look at the gearing behind the back wheels and you'll see that it's actually quite simple there too. Half inch bolt, let's take it out. Wheel comes right off. Pretty simple design. We have one gear here that just simply spins either forward or backward. And down here, this is just gonna line up with this gear to make the wheels go. This gear here connects directly to the transmission axle. Unlike some better built transmissions that have a keyway and a spring that allow this gear to ratchet back and forth and even let you pivot and back up better, this transmission doesn't have that. So you really have to rely on the transmission disengaging so that way you can back up. It's also a good idea to grease these gears, but it's not gonna help out our personal pace problem all that much. Now that we got that out of the way, understand that I am not necessarily blaming all us users out there, but the normal motions that we become accustomed to up until using this mower are what's causing this backup problem to happen. The first scenario that I found that seems to be causing this problem a lot is shortcuts and short passes. So now I know you're guilty of this, I'm guilty of this, and basically anybody who's ever touched a lawnmower has done this before. So we all have those spaces in our lawn where we have to push the mower forward, then immediately back up, and then pivot a little bit, and then back up, and then maybe pivot the other direction, and then back up. Doing shortcuts like that just to trim up a small space. Now what's happening here, every single time you push the mower forward and then back, you're engaging the transmission, disengaging, engaging, disengaging, engaging, disengaging. over and over and over again. And sometimes what happens is the transmission gets stuck somewhere in the middle, Bruh. not allowing you to back up the mower. Right now you can see that the transmission is fully engaged. And then when I let go of the personal pace, it drops back down. But sometimes this transmission while doing this on and off, on and off, can sometimes get stuck in the middle. And then I can still push it down a little bit, then fully disengaging the transmission. So if it's not fully disengaged, that's where we create this fight and the wheels are trying to go one way because the belt's driving the transmission forward and we're trying to pull the mower back still. Some better transmissions are actually gonna have some kind of spring mechanism or something to push that transmission back down to fully disengage it. Toro, cutting corners. Even though it's a high-end homeowner model, doesn't have that. <coughs> Cheaping out! <coughs> and because that transmission doesn't fully disengage, the wheels lock up when you try to back it up. Hey, if I was those wheels and the transmission's telling me to go one way, I'd be locking up too. And to help prevent this video from locking up with the YouTube algorithm, would you mind taking a super quick second to hit that like button down below? Thank you. So how do we correct this? While I don't have a concrete solution to this problem, what I've tried doing, and it seemed to work, was to let the machine flow a little bit more. So instead of ramming it forward, cause you gotta get it done and you're in a rush and you gotta get the kids to the birthday party by three, simply let it flow. Ease it off, push it forward, ease it back. Take the extra second and let that transmission fully disengage so you can pull it back nice and smooth. Take your time on those shortcuts. Don't be Johnny Jackhammer, he never lasts. Now the second time I see this happen is actually very similar to the first, it's when you're in tight quarters. A perfect example of these tight quarters would be this space by my pool where I have to pivot the mower around a lot. When I get into these tight spaces and have to pivot and turn a lot, I find that the mower does have issues backing up. Now everybody's lawn is different, my lawn's different than your lawn, so what I found I had to do was somehow make a way to lengthen my passes out. Maybe it's by doing a loop, around that small spot. Again, taking notice of the flow with the personal pace and allowing that transmission to fully disengage, you'll find that you'll have less issues backing up. Now the third time that I notice this happening is when I have to make a long pass and then turn the mower around and make my way back. But with a certain kind of spin on the mower. I have a couple trees on my side yard that actually forces me to 
back the mower into the turn. If I go to pivot the mower and position it better, I find that I have issues backing it up there. So what I mean is this, if I take the mower and turn it like so and I swing it around, and then from there, try to back it up and then reposition it just a little bit, I find that the wheels lock up. For some reason, the mower just doesn't like that extra step of repositioning. So my recommendation is this, just make your turn and go, and then if you have to come back and hit that spot again later, do it then. Now what I find interesting is I never saw this issue happen on the old style personal pace found on my old Toro Time Master. That was a bigger, heavier mower, and the issue of the back wheels locking up when backing up never happened to me in the four years that I owned it. I attribute this to the handlebars being straight and not this stupid, silly, curvy design. Sure, every guy loves curves, but not if they don't know what they're doing with them. Now Toro did say that this is a race car inspired design. No, it's not. They totally missed the mark 100% on this because this is not a race car handle it's a baby carriage handle it's way too big and clunky another situation that I found is this personal pace handlebar assembly can get stuck somewhere in the middle you'll see that if I push the personal pace down and let go it doesn't always come all the way back and that causes the transmission down low to still be partially engaged. I'm gonna blame this on two things. Number one, this curvy design creates too much friction on this handlebar, allowing it to kind of get stuck halfway where you could still pull it back some more. Another issue here is this spring. It seems like it could have more tension and push this handlebar assembly back better. One thing that I found that helped a little bit was to take some WD-40 and spray it down inside along the handlebar to reduce the amount of friction. You can even get down here, spray it on that handlebar. It might drip out a little bit, that's okay. Same thing here on this side, spray down the handlebar and then spray up here. Too. You could even take your WD-40 and spray it down the transmission cable to allow it to slide better. I did notice that this does help the personal pace glide just a little bit better. Lastly, another thing you could try adjusting is the drive cable. I recently did a video on this procedure and I'll have it linked down below in the description for you. This is something that I will continue to monitor on this mower and if I find any more issues with it, I will gladly share them. If you have any further information on this personal pace problemo, would you please share it down below in the comments. For more cool garage gear content, click or tap the screen right here. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the garage.